Yes, yes. What is... All this imagery, right? This is probably an image nobody ever saw before. Look. Look. And every everybody thinks that all this symbology is just gone. They're like, yeah, well, it might have had its place long ago. My grandpa was probably one of them. And sure, now they're old and probably most of them are already dead. And well, they just had fun playing that game for a while. And then they just and then they put their robes and their cloaks and their aprons back into their closet. And it's, it's just gone. Whoever even thought that that would be. I mean, that that just sounds like denial. Right. Because just as in the same reason why that guy joined them what would change that would prevent somebody today joining them if that guy joined back in his age or whatever why would somebody not join today and you're like well because people actually know now that the power is actually in the people and this this no it's because it's the same lie it's always been the same lie and the lie has a hold. On the flesh. The flesh is weak to the lie. The flesh only overcometh the lie with the spirit of the Father. Not through our own efforts. Not through our own will. Not through our own work. It's only by grace through faith. Amen. So what is <clears throat> what is chess? Well, it's just a game. It's just a game that you play and it's just, you know, it's just a 64 squared square. And it's all good, bud. There's just pieces and each piece has its own movability, its own uh, sophistication and level of engagement, and we call them different names. And sure, there are many moves that you can do, but only some moves are favorable and other moves are not favorable. And it just comes down to strategy and uh, being able to see the plane of field, to be able to read a few moves ahead to read your opponent to move the piece, not the player, and this and this and that and this and this and smashed. Nothing. Right? Look look at all the imagery, right? Right? Pawns, this, cannon fodder, this, the other, all these bash words that mean nothing, right? But <clears throat> ultimately, what is... What is it? Well, it requires two players. Usually distinguished by the white and the black pieces. One occupies a off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on, based on some binary bash this. And somehow you can win. Somehow you win. You don't, Sometimes you can win. But who cares? It's just a game, right? It has nothing to do, right? With actual life. No, no, no. Life is not a game, people. No, 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 no. It's just about this globe and this other globe. Separated by two pillars. And then just a smash basal layer of black and white squares leading to some thrones and some observant witnesses on either side. 
Then there's the, where the Grand Masters is and the Bash books are opened. And some spectators from above that just breathe heavily, panting into the window, fogging it up. Hmm. 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 What is going on? Well, a lot, right? But this is where, to me, it 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 is. It's pretty telling when a personality like this guy all of a sudden is a grandmaster, and it's his choice, and he's giving a talk on the game, throwing throwing out hand gang signs. Throwing out gang signs and dropping this name, Bobby Fisher and this bash name. Fisher Price and Robert Fisher Price and this, this, and that. So what is this guy? Who knows, but he's talking about something. Throwing down gang signs and how to occupy space. And how to create hold space and this, this, and the other. I mean, if you wonder where certain language ends up occupying the mainstream level, the bandwidth of narratives that are out there, you better believe that they're cooked up on a play on a on a on a board, the board of directors, the board of this, the board of that, the bash, 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 the the assembly of this, the. The order of that, the order of this, the brotherhood of this, and the Bash brotherhood, and the sector of that, and the coven of that, and the Bash this or that, and the disaffiliation with that one, and this or that, and the favor of this, and the non favor of that, and this, this, and the point, and the action groups, and the committees, and that, that, and the approval of this, and the mandate of that, Bash, 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 nothing. Abuses in the dark. Manipulation, right? Supposedly reading, right? Making a move in anticipation for a response. A predicted response. A, a supposedly foreseed predicted movement. Which is why you made that move in the first place. Because you predicted that there would be a, a, a particular response. Right, the other person is not just going to respond in a, in a way that's going to surprise you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made that move, right? You make a move because you are expecting something in response, and then this person, right, or this side makes another move with the same motive. All the while, both sides are apparently trying to outwit one another. This is a very simplistic kind of presentation for my own sake but i'm sure it gets way more complicated over my head and you know i'll, I'll be like i'm just stupid i'm just so stupid i don't know what's going on and this 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 and then i'm overtaken by by the by the black rook and this this is and the pawns are just everywhere and bash my army could defeat it to hold it out no i'm overrun checkmate but listen to what this person says. What is this person saying, right? You type in that smash? Because apparently this guy was just, just lost his marbles, right? In later in, in his later life. Because first, that this person was wow, he defeated the Russian grand player, the grand master of chess. And this person, Mr. Fisher Price, he apparently just lost it this person just lost it went off the rails and just became some bash rene renegade bigot right racist uh hateful bitter just old man right well at least that's what the world wants you to believe but beyond all his assertions right his overtly ridiculed statements that are labeled racism and this and that 
what is he actually talking about, right? What is what is he saying? Because this guy, this guy made his fame on playing this, right? He made his fame playing this, this, right? So what's going on? What is going on? Well, what is he saying? The reality of modern chess. But, as I said, I don't like to delve too much into the old chess because I hate it so much. I feel by delving into it, I'm, I'm promoting it in some way. But this, I don't want to promote this goddamn game. But this, but my this, only this, interest in the old chess, I have one interest, only one interest to expose the prearrangement. People are living in a dream world. But don't you think... Okay, so his only interest is to expose prearrangement. Immediately followed by... You're, you're living in a dream world. So what is he talking about? Prearrangement? Is he only talking about this... You know, uh board game what is he talking about he says he hates the game and now his only interest is exposing prearrangement what does that mean prearrangement of this board game i don't think so i think he's talking about something else because let's listen a little more they do not a toxic coming from the best player that ever was and now saying it is the most Life is like that, no? Yeah. Oh, he says life is like that. No? Hmm. Life there is there's one question that, I, that I've always wanted to ask you, given the opportunity. It's not really paradoxical. Yeah. Chess is, a, is basically a search for truth, right? So I'm searching for... Amazing statement, Mr. Mr. Fisher-Price. Amazing statement. Chess is basically a search for truth, is it not? He asks. Hmm. 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 So, even, right, the hidden knowledge, the occult knowledge, supposedly, is um, not occult to those who practice it, to those who are seeking it right so in a sense those who practice this game could be said to be seeking truth and he's making that association with chess and life so he's saying chess is basically a search for truth so therefore i i'm interested in searching for truth because now i hate the game he's saying now i hate the board game and prearrangement and now I'm actually interested in exposing. I'm reading between the lies, but he's he was he's basically stating he's more interested in life Ex and and seeking the truth in life. Right? Let's listen a little more. The truth, the truth is chess is no good anymore. And so now the truth is that chess isn't good anymore. Right? So he's saying this game isn't good anymore. Okay. So that's an honest on the table. Huh? On the it, table. It, on? on the table when you're playing the chess. Chess is no good and it hasn't been a good game objectively for 150 years since all this theory. It was a good game maybe 200 years ago in the time of um, uh, who, learned, who developed the pawns uh, theory. What's his name? Uh, Champion. It's already then, by then, it was a bad game. Yes, yes. So he said, yeah, when I joined the game, it was already bad. Yes, it was a bad game, but, I, uh, but on, the other, on the other hand, it wasn't as bad as today. No comparison, but it was a bad game. But at the time, I was uh, fired with ambition because to, to win, and I did not, I was willing to uh, overcome all of these uh, idiotic obstacles in the way of a, uh, that block a talented person from uh, winning. But now, you see, what, 
what, as, the, as you get older, right? What do they say? Uh, you have to get, um, what is the point? As you get older, you, if you don't get better, you have to get smarter, no? Yeah, yeah. I'm much smarter now than I was then, you know? Much, much smarter. Now, I, I, I don't want to uh, do things the hard way. Why do things the hard way when there's an easier, better way? Did you gradually... Uh, Interesting point. Why do it the hard way when there's an easier, more straightforward way? Well... People can read between the lines, but when you look at it from the perspective of this game, it seems very complicated. And he's saying, "No, yeah, yeah I, I thought I, it, the game was bad when I joined it, but I thought I could. I was full. I was burning with zeal, and I, 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 I convinced myself I could overcome these Id- idiotic obstacles to win. And he did win. He studied the craft, the theory, and he overcame it." He became champion, despite knowing that it was a bad game already when he joined it. So, and and now he he was now he's saying he's a lot smarter, and than he was then, and therefore he hates it. He hates the game now. And now they're asking him, "Well, did you hate it gradually, or did it happen overnight?" Kind of thing. So, this person is admitting a lot. In this little interview, because he's talking about prearrangement, the pre the prearrangement of the game. He's talking about the uh, corruption in the game, and the idiotic obstacles that he knew were in place, but he joined it anyway. So it's like the people that join, quote unquote, the corruption of the world, thinking that they're gonna turn it over you know uh change it from the inside out but then they realize that they end up being corrupted and they end up being disillusioned and let down and all of a sudden they they don't even recognize who they are anymore but somehow they say well i i'd like to think that i left the world in a more better place than from when i joined it but that's wishful thinking because the reality is that who is being overrun because simply by playing this idiotic game, aren't you overrun already? Because what are the observable challenges in life, if not the constant obstruction of a objective observable truth, right? A blurring of the line of what is truth, which this person speaks of. That's his interest. He's like, well, isn't it just uh, isn't just about arriving at truth? And he's saying, I hate the game now, so I'm interested in more about the truth in life. And of course, he's not, he he did he's not using he didn't say those words, but one is to read between the lines. Of what he's saying, because he's saying a lot. Well, you, you, you were quoted as a young man as saying the old chess is you're banging your head against the wall with this theory. The you are, you know, you were trying to find some little improvement on move, you know, 18 or 20. It's ridiculous. It gets harder harder and harder. You need more and more computers. You need more and more people working for you. You, you know? And less so and what? less talent. Yeah, and less and less uh, creative. Yeah, you know, it's ridiculous. Enjoyment, everything. What? Interesting. He's saying, you know, it becomes about just trying to f- perfect little details on move 18 or 20. So in many ways, moves 1 through 18 are already known. They're predictable. And now it's just a matter of trying to just minimal micro increments of apparent betterment progress to try and um, overcome move 20. 
and to in order to accomplish that you need more people working for you you need more computing power you need this and this and that and this and he says uh yeah it's ridiculous it's no longer about talent it's it's about manipulation it's about manipulation at that point exactly just like any athlete right they can reach a certain level of of uh, performance until they start using steroids and other bash chemicals to enhance and bash 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 until the point where you're like well now i just need a bionic limbs now i just need a steel frame now i need just synthetic eyeballs and this cuz i need another i need another brain to break more records and this guy's saying, oh, that's just ridiculous For because now it's not about talent. It's not about um, functioning with our own given abilities. It's now just tweaking to manipulate what already exists in order to supposedly enhance our next move. All the while, it's this. It's just a. It's just a simple little game that apparently one wins and the other side loses. So it's it's about winning in the end. But in a world that is already obviously set to materialistically lose, because everyone you know can see that the material world decays. So in that sense it's it's already it's already lost right so why is it there an attempt to physically materially win so that is the false you know um promise that you we in the flesh and the material are somehow winning which is one can clearly see that the agenda is to sell and to propagandize your desires to go along with whatever narrative is out there spinning that you are the change you are the future you get to decide what happens you are the transcendence you are the hybridization you are the future you are the eternal expansive consciousness da, da, this this the other right just to boast that you're like i'm winning oh yeah i'm winning yes yes i'm winning winning at what exactly so this person is talking about pre arrangement he's talking about truth he's talking about uh zeal and basically pride this guy was a proud a pro, he, he, this guy was full of pride because knowing that the game was bad he still joined it anyway because he's he's like yeah i i i i just convinced myself that i could overcome it he's like now but now i'm way smarter than i was before why why did you gradually start to hate chess or did it come suddenly Oh, that's a that's a good question again. Did I gradually? Say, I think it, it came gradually, but then at a certain point, I mean, I was hating it, but I didn't know it. You know what I mean? Because I was still trying to make it work. You know? But then now I realize I I was gradually hating it. You know, all along. So this person gradually hated it. Because he knew it all along, but he convinced himself, right? But he, he he's basically saying how he was in denial for a long time. And in, in, in other interviews, he talks about how in the Cold War um, era, he, he was basic. He says, I was used because my, in, my intelligence or my intellect or my abilities were um, were basically used as a weapon, right? to to show off the the superiority of the Americans versus the Russians right in the cold war blah 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 but he's like as soon as the cold war is over ah, i'm no longer needed and i was just discarded like a dirty soiled piece of 
toilet paper. And I'm sure that was a a, a cause for a lot of uh, resentment because he's like, he, he probably realized a lot of things in retrospect, even though he's admitting that he knew all along. But in retrospect, he was like, yeah, I knew it all along, but th- I still participated. And now look w- what it does. So he has every single reason to be in many ways talking about what he knows, what he lived, what he was exposed to, and what he ended, what he participated in. And if people call him names and, and label him a particular thing, well, go ahead. But um, there's a lot that this person um, revealed about our so-called world. And the game people are playing. That's what I find most interesting. Without bringing race or political agendas or even religious aspects to it. Even though, of course, they're inherent, but with without necessarily going into them. Like on the surface, he he's t- talking about a lot of things. Now, when you go into it a little bit deeper, of course, it all will come to the undeniable truth, which is the word of God. Which he can manipulate or he can be honest about and stand in it as it is written. I don't know too much about what his religious aspect was. What I've heard about it is that he claims to say that he, uh, coming to Christ is uh, a virtuous thing but he talks about it in a very hateful or a very bitter way because he talks about killing a a, a bunch of people and and you know executing them and basically man bringing about justice on his own when that's not what jesus talked about at all so i don't know i don't necessarily think that this person identifies as a follower of Christ but he definitely uses biblical language in in his rants he uses he brings in uh uh he, he talks about circumcision he's like oh yeah it's barbaric it's this this and that this this is the other blah 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 uh and he talks about justice being done and to restore the earth and all this stuff by killing other people right by killing in his words um those who identify with a particular faith so no wonders people call him a bigot a racist a bash this this the other das okay but when it comes to him talking about the infrastructure uh, of how men are engaging with themselves and others as though if it were a pre-arrangement moves, like making moves, right? In anticipation of a particular response, right? For a intended behavior for an intended uh, counter move, right? I mean, that's that's what it is. And people will say, yeah, it's called the art of war and this, this, and that, and this, is it knowing your enemy and this, this, and that, and that, and controlling the opposition and this. Sure, go ahead. But there are many levels to it. Right, that people are privy to, and they're all moving different pieces, but to the same board, right? And and to me, it's clear that Satan knows his end, but he is trying to manipulate the inevitable. 
he's trying to pers- make it seem as though he's winning when in reality he is losing. He his his fate is to be destroyed. Ultimately, thrown into the lake of fire. Yet, now being loosed after a thousand years of being bound in the bottomless pit, he goes out to deceive the nations. That's what he does. So he deceives the nations and is pitted them against one another, right? Making all these bash moves. Which to this person who probably was privy to a bunch of behind the scenes hypocrisies and manipulators in the dark he knows what it's all he 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 became hardened bitter by how they operate how they go a- about doing things and if it's true that he's i mean who how can it not be true that he was used right as a weapon right to boast about the intelligence of the superiority of the Americans versus the Soviets, right? The Russians and this and that. You can call it uh, psychological warfare or this or this or that or blah, blah, blah or intelligence superiority, bash, bash, bash. Through a game, the battle of the minds, the battle of the abilities of the human intellect and human capacity. So all all these notions, right? And you can say, well, what about the super soldier now? We're just out there creating super soldiers. And now that's the new chessboard. Well, perhaps. But this guy is telling you something. And you can deny it and just call this guy a hateful old man. Or you can actually consider what he's saying. Because it's not just coincidence and it's not just arbitrary bash that's out there happening it's all moves being deliberately made with a particular counter move response in mind all the while leading you to a particular end where the enemy will be clearly um, defined as those who follow the one authority of a sovereign living God and those who see themselves uh, as the only living God in the flesh, right? So the fleshly God versus the one eternal living spiritual God and our Lord Jesus Christ, the image of the invisible God. And so no wonder the, they hide in the dark and they call it occult knowledge and all this bash, bash, bash. Because you don't see them, but you see the effects of their moves. And it and, and, and who's behind all that? Satan. So... Let's read this Chronicles again. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. Yours, O Lord, in the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. You uh, and you are the ruler over all. In your hands are power and might to exalt and give strength to all. Amen. So, people are expecting many things to happen based on the moves that we're making, right? We're like, if we don't act now, we won't have any more fishes in the sea tomorrow. The prediction was by 2030 or by 2040, the oceans would be depleted, right? So all these projections and all these predictions based on models and bash experiments and studies and bash, 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 all part of this. 
right? So we trust in our own prof ability to prophesy, to predict. Yet we deny the only standing true and faithful word of God that is the testimony of Christ Jesus, which is the only spirit of prophecy that ever was, is, and will be. For his is the creation, for his is the life, for he is the way. We have been given the gift and promise of life eternal that was manifested through the appearing, the, the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ who brought life and eternity to light. Made it unexcusable to deny the light of God. But instead, we choose to remain in, in the darkness, putting faith in our own ability to move, to make a move, and to try and predict the counter move, to, to, try, to, to try and predict our the response and how well we're able to manipulate it. And with that, we call ourselves gods and creators of our own destiny, of our own future, of this, this, and the other, and we call ourselves the true light bearers. We call ourselves the true enlightenment, everlasting, expansive consciousness that's taking us into the next moment of blah, 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 blah. So, this <clears throat> is perhaps segueing into something that I find very interesting. So everyone knows who this person is, right? You type in, who is this person's husband? Because you hear a lot about, well, I married the person I met and who saved me on Twitter. And whoa, whoa, whoa. But yet you never really know who this person person is you know who this person is but who's that who's that apparently some lawyer and she's probably some lawyer too but let me just quickly I mean the imagery right everybody knows who this is right Everybody knows who that is. Right? What is what is that person? Um All of a sudden, right? Like, wow, like this this guy. Everybody knows who this guy, right? Everybody loves him. So, saved on so by social media from her hateful, bigoted, religious, extremist, hateful, um, just self-righteous, bash, bash, you know, cult, right? And so the story goes. So now, Megan believes that the Bible is not written by people under God's inspiration. So, in, in other words, she just believes that it's just another book. Instead, she thinks it is a document of people trying to understand how to be good. Right? Because they were just idiots. People are just bash idiots that they just stumbled across words and then just they're just they just tried so hard to and they're just trying to it's just the evolution of understanding how to be good people 
So, okay. And that other philosophies were developed with the same goals. So other philosophies, so she believes that all religions are just philosophies attempting at, at, at understanding how to be good. But apparently none, none of them have it right. Or all of them have it right. And it's just a free-for-all kind of mayhem. Amazing. She has stated that she is a believer in humanity. And in that way still classifies herself as a believer. Amazing. Amazing. Because now you can just believe in whatever you want and just call yourself a believer. Just like if you like Justin Bieber's music, you, by definition, are a believer. Megan avoids using the word cult to describe the bashed Westboro this because she acknowledges that cutting off contact with former members and a belief of an imminent end to the world are cultish beliefs. <laughs> so believing in the end of an or the imminent end to the world is a cultish belief. So anyone who's out there making movies about the end of the world or anybody who's out there crying about climate change and how it's just going to be the end of humanity, that's a cult, people. That's a cult, people. Get out of the cult, according to Megan. If you believe in that humanity is on the fast track to self-destruction, and that you're raping and killing the earth. And that the world is going to come to a, a just bash end. You better watch out because you're, you're participating in a cultish belief. Run, people. Run as fast as you can. So, I mean, it, it, very interesting. However, she believes that being allowed to leave the group and her parents helping her to pack her belongings are examples of non-cult-like actions of the group. Aw. So, okay, that's very interesting. And this I found the most interesting. Since leaving the Westboro Church, Megan has reconnected with Abid Bol, who apparently was the other person, I think their name is David or something, uh, who convinced her to atone for and fix her mistakes, introducing her to a Jewish concept called Tikkun Olam, which involves working to improve the world. I'll come back to that. She is now committed to reaching out to people whom she affected during her time with the group, the Westboro, Westboro Baptist Church, including Jewish communities, homosexuals, and the families of soldiers. Megan has traveled around the United States to speak with groups she had previously protested. She spoke at... Uh, at the Julicious Festival in Long Beach, California, at the invitation of David Abitbol, and accepted a one-month engagement with the Jewish community in Montreal in 2013, where she visited religious studies classes at Concordia University and spoke at a Jewish cultural festival in October 2015. I mean, this almost sounds like a commercial now. Commercial for what? Sounds a lot like uh, promoting... I don't know, the Jewish festivals, Jewish cultural festivals, amazing. In October 2015, she spoke at the Anti-Defamation League Youth Leadership Conference. Megan has uh, appeared in various media formats to promote her new values and beliefs. <laughs> her new values and beliefs. And uh, and all of a sudden, she's a she's a sensation. She's a she's a multimedia bash sensation. Why? Why does somebody, you know, have coming to new beliefs all of a sudden have to blast and and become somehow famous over? Hmm. Something good to ponder about, but perhaps because her 
church to begin with um created itself as a a scapegoat or it created itself to be the target by which the world could just blast down on what people call Christianity. And then somebody coming out from that apparent cult who she who Megan says, ah, I'd rather not call it a cult. While joining another cult, which are her new beliefs. So she just basically came out from one cult and joined another. Amazing. But people applaud. People applaud and, and just embrace her. Right? And, the, and Scripture says, well, if you were from the world, you would believe me. But since we're not from the world, you hate us. You don't hear what we say because we don't speak of worldly things. But somehow, if you're from the world, the world will love you. So, this sounds a lot like the world loving her because she now promotes the world's values. Hmm. Amazing. In 2017, she presented a TED Talk discussing her experience growing up, blah, blah, blah. In 2017, she appeared on the, This Experience. In 2018, she appeared in the first episode of I Love You, America, with blah, blah, blah. She is a member of Twitter Trust Type Tip Council and advocates overcoming disagreements between political and religious groups. So she's now a kumbayaist, a kumbaya ecumenical bash. Promotion, the philosophy of bash. She works with law enforcement agencies to give her perspective on uh, de-radicalizing, de-radicalizing members of extremists' organization and on counterterrorism. Interesting. Very interesting. But going back to what I said I would go back to this. The Jewish concept called Tikkun Olam is a concept in Judaism interpreted by some within Orthodox Judaism as the prospect of overcoming all forms of idolatry and by other Jewish thinkers as an aspiration to behave and act constructively and beneficially towards what? Well, once I heard a rabbi speaking on a cable channel as they don't don't believe in a in a literal messiah, but they believe the the Jewish body as being the messiah incarnate. That the responsibility of those who follow the Judaic uh, faith or whatever are are the vessels by which heaven on earth will be manifest. Right, so every person of that faith now takes the responsibility of making the world a better place. And he, and he, he, this person being interviewed on this channel on TV, uh, I think he was a rabbi, he, uh, he said, and that's why we go out and have permeated in all as, uh, sectors of, li- of life because we believe that it is our responsibility to make a better world. So he, I found it, I was just, it was just jaw dropping because I couldn't believe on one hand that this person was saying this. And on the other hand, I was like, yes, I can see why this person is saying this because that's what they're actually doing. Who knew? Who knew? So they, they're they they're un- unashamedly um, carrying out themselves as the messiah they believe that they are the messiah they're like we don't believe in a messiah as a one man coming to save the world no no no. he's like we are the messiah so okay continuing this behave and act constructively and beneficially documented use of the term dates back to the messianic period of bash bash since medieval times interesting interesting Kabbalistic literature, interesting. How did this have to be part of it? Of course it had to be. Is an esoteric method, discipline, and school of thought in Jewish mysticism. A traditional Kabbalist in Judaism is called uh, Mikabal, 
the definition of Kabbalah varies according to the tradition and aims of those following it from its religious origin as blah, blah, blah. So uh, masonry has its roots in this. Who knew? Who knew? There's nothing new under the sun. Satan is behind it all. Paganism isn't just a randomness of multiples of deities because ultimately it goes back to the dragon, the serpent, right? Satan himself. In modern era, among the post Haskala movements, Tikkun Olam is the idea that Jews bear responsibility not only for their own moral, spiritual, and material welfare, but also for the welfare of society at large. For many contemporary pluralistic rabbis, the term refers to Jewish social justice or the establishment of godly qualities throughout the world. In other words, heaven on earth. So they believe that man is the conduit for which, by which, through which comes a quote heavenly utopia a better world interesting very interesting so this person went from apparently believing the word of God to believing the word of men uh, ironically enough through uh, a Jewish, Kabbalistic, esoteric, mystic perspective. How ironic. How ironic. How ironic. So this person says he hates the game and he hates um, those who are playing and man manipulating You know, he, he, he talks about them and he says, yeah, th those people should be just eliminated. I don't agree with what he's saying because vengeance is the Lord's. Man is not here to execute his own justice and his own righteousness. For man does not have his own righteousness. We are to stand in the righteousness of Christ and Christ alone. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Right? The mystery. This is it. I do not want you to be ignorant of the this mystery, brothers, so that you will not be conceited. A hardening in part has come to Israel until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. Then all of Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove godlessness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Regarding the gospel, they are enemies on your account. But regarding election, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who formerly disobeyed God have now received mercy through their disobedience. So they too have now disobeyed in order that they too may now receive mercy through the mercy shown to you. For God has consigned everyone to disobedience so that he may have mercy on everyone. O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and unretraceable his ways! 
Who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Who has first given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, forever and ever. Right here. Jesus Christ promised and fulfilled. The word of God was preached. The gospel was preached to the ends of the world until the number of Gentiles has come in. Then all Israel will be saved. How? By the return of the Son of Man in the clouds. And judgment came upon Israel. And there was those who were delivered by believing on the Son. Who knew? They were, they were the ones who received the promise. Everyone had their reward according to what they opened their hearts to. What they were vessels to. What they fulfilled in their hearts. And right here it says, right, to you, regarding the gospel, they are enem enemies on your account. But regarding election, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. So when we think of Israel as uh, as having received judgment within that generation that Jesus spoke of, this generation will not pass until these things are fulfilled, right? And many other passages. Judgment came and then the kingdom of heaven was given to the saints. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So who are these people that this person calls Jews? Or who are these people that this person calls Jews? Because if clearly all <clears throat> Israel um, was saved in the terms of the, the, the gospel was preached to them and they have received judgment for that. Who are them? And, and and you say, well, th there's many people who claim that they are. And, you know, you have the, the Hebrew Israelites and this and this. And, and then you have the different kinds of Jews who are the Semitic people. But then you have the European Jews that were converted and this and this. So there's many conversations, many or there's multiple narratives out there, right? But then we read this. In him you were also circumcised in putting off of your sinful nature with the circumcision performed by Christ and not by human hands. And having been buried with him in baptism, you were raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave us all our trespasses. So, cl clearly, Jesus Christ fulfilled the old covenant which um, bestowed upon Abraham, right, and his seed, right? When when God told him, right, that uh, your descent, you and your descendants, sh uh, shall be circumcised, right? Which was uh, my covenant, which you shall keep. <clears throat> so this represented a covenant. Circumcision 
though in the flesh, represented what Jesus Christ then revealed in his appearing. That now the actual circumcision was the was performed by Christ himself without hands, not to the flesh, but uh, through the heart, right? And this is um, Romans, right? A man is not a Jew because he is one outwardly, right? In appearance or th by or because of circumcision of the flesh. Nor is circumcision only outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew because he is one inwardly. And circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a man's praise does not come from men, but from God. This is what Jesus Christ revealed because in in times past it was hidden in God right and it was <clears throat> the covenant was a very symbolic fleshly one until the coming of the son of the messiah so th these people were living under the old covenant and Jesus Christ came to reveal the mystery that it's a that's a it is a matter of the heart by the spirit of god and though abraham had faith which was accounted for him for, uh, accounted to him for righteousness now the same faith that uh, man be, uh, when jesus lived is applied and um the heart is affected, right? It's a circumcision made without hands, which is of the heart, right? The renewal, the splitting open of your heart. Taking out that heart of stone and giving you a heart of flesh. So, who are today's outward, outwardly Jew, Jews? Do they exist if 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 judgment was already um, given to the to Israel to the house of Israel, and clearly it was the salvation was opened to the Gentiles because of the unbelief of the house of Israel which Romans clearly talks about, right? It talks about, right, that they, <clears throat> those who did not believe um, according to the gospel are on, your, on their account enemies, but regarding election, loved on the account of the patriarchs. For God's gift uh, and his call are irre irrevocable. So it's 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 truly the justice, right? As this says, right? The knowledge of God. Wow, how wise. And the, how the, the depths and the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and untraceable his ways. Amen. Because it's not anymore about race or um, religion. What religion are you, bud? Huh? I don't know. What religion are you? What what synagogue or what temple do you go to? Huh? Uh huh? No. For we are the temple for the Holy Spirit. Every man, right, is a temple for for the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is living in you for we get we either are surrendering ourselves to the authority of God or we're rebellious in which case we have denied and rejected the Holy Spirit for the spirit of rebellion and and destruction and darkness which then becomes the vessel by which 
all sorts of manipulations take place. And we think we're playing a game. We think we're making the right choices and the right moves. When all the while, we are pre-arranged. Satan knows his end. He's just using willing players to go about and deceive. So, I wanted to touch on some aspects of what this person talks about. left me with two distinct impressions. These people are weird. (laughs) And these people are really interesting writers. (laughs) Uh, Making jokes, right, about their signage, perhaps? This person laughs. Hmm. I don't remember the first words that I ever spoke to my dear friend Megan Phelps Roper, and that's probably for the best, because I probably shouted them from a car. So driving by saying slanderous profanities, right? And saying, oh, F you, or probably, yeah, Bosh, get out of this town if you don't like it. So who knows what this guy <laughs> was saying, but he's making jokes about it. Amazing. But I'm confident that no one hearing them would have predicted that I would one day publicly utter the phrase, my dear friend Megan Phelps Rope. Yeah, nobody would have guessed. Because who knew that... Um, there are players out there who are playing the part, right, to uh, instill in the hearts of men more and more hatred towards the Word of God. Because even people that claim to be speaking the Word of God or whatever or, or, or behaving in a certain way because they, they're, they, then they say, well, God tells us to do this and this and that and that. We're not supposed to just take it by, by face value. You know, it says to test to, st- to test the spirit behind all these plays, behind all these moves, behind all these um, appearances. We are to see what the fruits of them are, right? The other time I talked, I mentioned that how did they know which were well, um, the people at Ephesus? How did they know um, that those who claimed to be apostles were imposters because they they probably tested them and or meaning they probably came to discern right what they said what they did and what they taught and and came to the realization that it was a lie they were lies amen so we're not just supposed to just, um accept everything just by face value, no. Of course, Satan, that's what he wants you to do. And he, he will blur the lines and make you believe that if you don't accept things the way that they're presented to you, either by um, claiming some sort of virtue or this, this, or some sort of authority because of experts or this, or then you somehow are, are the naughty one. Or that you are the somehow bigot or the, the just bash, bash, hateful person, right? Interesting. So... Let's go continue again. Roper. And yet here we are. Amazing. It's been one of my life's great privileges to get to know Megan and her story. Over the past several years, she has undergone change on a scale that most of us will never know. Rat- really? Why is it so amazing? Well, the world wants to convince you of that. Radical reshapings of her faith and worldview and of the world's view of her. Estrangement from her family exile from her home, reunion with fellow exiles, marriage to a man whose first words to her were even more offensive than mine, (laughs) and parenthood to a baby so adorable she makes the Gerber baby look like Wilfred Brimley. Amazing. So, uh, a typical introduction, right? A typical introduction of the world. Amazing. But, very interesting. What are the, let's see, let's move to, where was it? Cruel and destructive in the lives of so many people, 
including ourselves, um, and then and knowing, feeling so so yes, this is I know this is wrong, and then thinking, oh my God, like what if this is Satan whispering in my ear, and I can't trust myself, and this is a test from God, and I'm failing. And so all of this is happening in my thoughts as I am still completely enmeshed in the church and all of the activities and spending all of my time with these people who, if they knew what was happening in my mind, like I just felt like such a betrayer, but I, I couldn't. So, of course, right? Betrayer. So who knew that even Jesus recognized that among the 12, there would be one who betrayed him? Amazing. So, just, of course, uh, Scripture also talks about many are called, but few are chosen. So, even just because you're from the seed of Abraham does not mean that you became to have that faith. And Scripture also says, not all men have faith. And not all men have the knowledge of the Father and the Son. For not all men believe. So, this person might have been thinking all these things, but what's missing? Well, this person either you know, I, um, believed certain things because she just grew up in that reality or kind of had a superiority complex where the, she believed herself to be better than other people. But then when certain other things came to... Uh, to appear to her or to be challenged within her, all of a sudden she starts doubting and questioning all these things. Well, Jesus gave up the parable of the sower, right? The seed that falls on stony ground or uh, amongst thorns or amongst uh, good ground and all this, right? So there are, th the, the scripture is flawless when it comes to talking about the, the, the process by which the Word of God is alive and present and how the devil, and Satan, comes to try and take it away or to try and mislead you. So, <clears throat> if this person knew that, but then she's like, oh, I, I became tormented in that reality. Well, who convinced herself to play the game then when it's about either putting down everything before the Lord or trying to figure it out yourself so many people might say well this person wasn't an actual believer then perhaps perhaps it's also a a very clear, observable case study of how Satan operates. How the world will receive those who promote and advocate and, and uh, are doing the moves of the world and playing the game. They will boast those players and give them a, a pedestal and give them a platform. And this guy will say, I, I am so happy to call this person my friend. Who would have thought? And this. And, right? Because the world considered this person an enemy before because they're like, oh, this person is so hateful and bosh, 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 bosh. So where is the unity and love that these people promote? It's only until this person said, okay, guys, I'm from the world now. And this person's like, oh, okay, whoa. Okay, friend. Amazing. I felt like I, I had to go through that process. I had to, you know, I had to go through it all. If I had left, you know, without being certain that it was the right thing to do, that would have been, I think, a, a really big mistake. I think it would have. How did you know it was the right thing to do? Interesting. This person coming from a background, right, where she believes the Word of God to be true, all, all of a sudden, then she says, I had to know I was doing the right thing. Otherwise, I would have been destroyed. 
So somehow she came to the conclusion with certainty that she was doing the right thing and leaving this by just leaving it all behind and admitting that she was apparently wrong. Who knew that she was already wrong to begin with? Everyone is wrong to begin with. That is called recognizing the folly of her way and repenting. That is called recognizing that no effort, no no man's will will ever save you, will ever give you conviction and certainty in your own life. But what do you see? You see this. You see this, where man thinks himself righteous and thinks himself the savior of the world and sees all man, man, men, is particularly of the Jewish faith, as the saviors. Right? The, the, just, the Jewish social justice. Amazing. Permeating all sectors of life, of systems, and basically taking control. Because nobody else could do it, because nobody else has the uh, morality and savviness and intelligence to do it, but the Jewish Kabbal Kab Kabbalistic practitioner who knew would have been even more difficult to have moved on um, once I actually did leave. Um, and then the other thing that was really difficult was, you know, the allegations of abuse in my family. That was something that I had, you know, I had heard mm -hmm. all, you know, growing up. Um, my, I have two uncles who left the church when I was, before I was born. Right. And, you know, these accusations that they um, had made of, uh, of my grandfather's, um, you know, abuse of them and of, of his wife, my, my gran. And, you know, we had always publicly denied that. And even... Okay, so there was physically... It's lovingly dedicated to your parents. It must have been a difficult decision to include things like, you know, honest, an honest reckoning with physical abuse that you experienced growing up bearing in mind that that might run counter to your purposes or not being certain how they might react to it? How did you expect that they might um, respond to, to that or rationalize it? Or did, did you expect them to reach out to you? Any of those issues? I mean, I knew, I knew that they would feel betrayal. Yeah. And that was really, you know, I, I hate that. I hate that anything that I do... She hates that she betrayed them. Really? Then why did you do it? ...is painful to them. You know, because... And she'll say, because it was right for me. It might be right for them to remain in their del in their delusion, right, according to her. But she'll say, no, but it was right for me to come out, and now my life's effort is to try to get them out. <sighs> really? Amazing. I don't intend to harm them. What I intend is to try to help them see things the way that people on Twitter helped me see things. You know, Twitter saved her people. Remember that. You know, I was an unwilling listener. Like I, I did not go to Twitter to be changed, and yet I was. And so I, the part of the problem is that because Westboro, is they, they, because they cut you off when you leave, you know, I can make these arguments to them in private, you know, and I do in letters. I, I reach out to them privately, but you know, that's, they don't, they can hide that. Right. They can hide that from my siblings. They can hide that from the younger members of the church who I know are, you know, on the internet. And so this is also why I feel it's important to make the arguments publicly. Mm -hmm. And also because, you know, Westboro's um, beliefs and actions, like they're not the only people who, who have, you know, similar ideas. Right. There are a lot of other groups. Um, really? So with that, she's probably talking about all Christians or all self-identified Christians who, let's be honest, just because you call yourself a Christian does not mean you are a person that has belief in the Son of God and believes the Word of God. It just means that you, by name only, identify with a particular set of ideas, namely brought on to you by an authority either by a church authority or some sort of institution which is probably absent of um, keeping 
in priority the teachings of the Word of God as the only authority and instead go along with me- traditions of man and convenience and notions of social justice and very worldly um, accomplishments and goals, right? Because <clears throat> this person admits, right? They no longer believe that the Bible is an uh, is 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 the word of God, right? Written by inspired men through the Holy Spirit. She believes it as an attempt of just like any other religion to describe how to be good. So when this person says that she believes that there are other people that hold views like this, she really means the whole body of quote-unquote believers of the Word of God because by definition, she believes that the Bible is just another philosophical book. In other words, false, an attempt of men. So she's by saying, yeah, it's not just my church. There's other people that have the same views. Hmm. Interesting statement. Um, And so it it feels important to argue, you know, make these arguments in public because there are so many other people who are affected by them, too. This specifically about the abuse, I felt like I could not exclude that. I tried not to gratuitously. So by definition, this person said anybody who holds the word of God as true and faithful is abused (laughs) and they will go out and abuse and abuse and abuse. Amazing. Include things just for the sake of it. It's salacious enough. It doesn't need any help with that. So the part about the abuse, what was so important about it and why it couldn't be excluded. I think there were, there were two things. Indoctrination look like, and when you, so indoctrination looks like abuse to this person. Okay. You, as a kid, when you, when you understand that you cannot push back you without, without severe consequences, that is part of it. Before you learn fear of God and fear of hell, you understand fear of pain. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it it felt like I, I couldn't exclude that. And so this person is saying, guys, avoid pain at all cost. Don't even try to inflict pain on me because that's abuse. Interesting. So is the objective to just live in a painless reality? What does that even mean? Because now even pain is described as emotional pain, suffering. Did this person forget about what is described as worldly suffering and godly suffering? What is the difference? She knew at one point, but now to her, it's all about who cares? It's all about pain and not feeling pain. Okay. Because pain is abuse, and oh, no, 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 I just have to go mend and just make things better because I cause so much pain to people. Because this person didn't go out there and beat up people with her fists or whatever. She went out there and apparently caused pain with words. Right? So what's this person talking about? She's like, before I learned fear of God and fear of hell, I learned fear of bash pain. Oh. What is this person talking about? Write an honest account of what happened. Um, and so that, that was part of it. The other part was, what was the other part? Oh, yeah. So this person is saying, yeah, I, I, I was beat up by my parents. Ah. You know how many other kids that aren't necessarily from a supposed cult upbringing beat to a pulp? How many other children are not necessarily beat to a pulp, but experience all sorts of suffering, pain, as you described it, in a non-physical way? By neglect, by... Um, abusive language by degrade de- degrading right um hostile comments believe you know bestowing upon a child just the most horrific terror of attack with words 
as this person might have said, oh, I, 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 I was part of that and I afflicted others with words and I was the root of offense. Oh. So what's going on? Ultimately, we are very well aware of what the world says is free speech and what <clears throat> the Word of God tells us is speech or words that point to the truth and maketh a man free if one if one believes on the word of god so just because we have free speech doesn't mean we are free and just because we live not identifying with a particular religion or institution does not make us pain free and just because we speak and in favor of not being physically abusive or this or that does not make us abuse free or does not make us non-abusers. So what is this person talking about? Or, or religious parents aren't the only ones who abuse their children in the way this person is talking about abuse. <laughs> it was the, um, you know, there's a thing that... A, a, um, a theme, I guess, with a, a bunch of things that happened at Westboro that I was, you know, recognizing as I was writing the book. This, and part of it is the willingness to lie. Mm -hmm. and okay, to the willingness to lie and not admit that you're wrong. Okay. But keeping that in mind, and I'll just point out this last thing from this video, this interview, which to me speaks volumes product of very attentive loving parents you okay so she's not and you know celebrating she's talking about the you know after leaving the the apparent cult she went to live with this jewish family um for a while and you know they got to you know uh learn from one another and this this and the other and uh, and okay the point she's making is with them and, and he said he was telling this this group of people like you guys are like the best house guests we've ever had <laughs> like, like, help, helping clean up you know my sister actually stayed and you know helped paint the kitchen for passover and all this and and you know and he was saying like clearly you are the product of very attentive loving parents who taught you you know good ways of being in the world right. they just uh Amazing, amazing statement. Which to her previous comment of like, oh, I felt I needed to talk about the abuse people. Yet now she's saying, wow, we were praised for having loving and very insightful parents that taught us to be good people, apparently. To be the best house guests we ever could be. And all this bash. What is she saying? They just also taught you all these other things that they themselves were taught as as children. Right. So now she's saying it's understandable that my parents could only live according to what they were taught and blah blah blah. So now we now are somehow living out the 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 good aspect of being taught how to be the best citizens and bash bash bash. And other people can recognize it to the point where they're calling us the best house guests we've ever had. So which is it going to be, Megan? Did you come from a horrific, abusive family that just couldn't help to kick you in the chest every opportunity that they had? Or are they like most parents, you know, with a good, with a, with supposed good intentions in their heart to raise you right? And whatever uh, abuse you might have, uh, in retrospect, seen as abuse, or even as a child, you were like, oh, this is unfair, and bash, bash, bash. All of a sudden, you can recognize that now now in your adult life or whatever, you're like, hmm, do I forgive my parents for having done that to me because I recognize, you know, their folly of their way or this or this or the other or that? Like, do you not know what forgiveness is? Because in one with in one breath you say, yeah, I need to get away from the abuse, and I couldn't reconcile their abuse, and then the other you're like, well, but then they made me the perfect house guest. <laughs> what is going on?
Right. And so again, that, that his willingness to see the, the complexity of the situation, to not just write off our family as completely evil and irredeemable, it was just really amazing and wonderful, especially in the direct aftermath of leaving them. Writing is So she's uh, commending this other person's family to take them in, despite coming from so apparently a, a hateful cult where these other people could see that their family wasn't a complete write-off, that they still had some sort of good inherent traits that were visible and palpable in these two human beings that now were in their house as guests, where they got to see the fruits of their upbringing. Interesting. Very interesting. So, this is just, just it's, to me, it seems like a, a big hot mess, just a, bi a big confusion, big bash, just, right? There's zero comments, even though this is a two, two years old and has more than 20,000 views, yet it has zero comments. Amazing. Enough of that. Just, again, throwing gang signs. This guy talking about, you know, the behind the scenes operators of um, who believe themselves to be the Messiah in the flesh, who are apparently responsible to bring about the Jewish social justice. And my question would be, who are, if judgment was already passed to Israel and they reigned and lived with Christ a thousand years, Clearly, Scripture is right. Satan comes out to deceive the nations. The nations! It doesn't talk about uh, Israel or, or Israel or this, the, or the tribes. or the, No, the, the nations. Because Israel was already judged. Is that not what Scripture says? And it says that then, right, S Satan goes to surround the beloved city and the camp of the saints. The saints, the camp of the saints. Who are the saints? Those who do and keep the word of God and do the will of God to surrender and subject their lives to serve the Lord. Not to serve themselves, not to boast themselves above their creator, but to do God's will in, his, in and through his love. In and through his word. In and through his son's sacrifice for the redemption of men. To love God with all your heart, strength, and mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. To be made perfect in the love of God. I know, so this is right to the church of Smyrna. I know your affliction and your poverty, though you are rich, and I am aware of the slander of those who falsely claim to be Jews, but are in fact the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will suffer tribulation for ten days. Be faithful even unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Amen. So even in in uh, right before right the reign of Christ for a thousand years with men, the Church of Smyrna was being warned, or was being recognized for suffering through what is described to be the slander from those who falsely claim to be Jews. The Church of Philadelphia. Look at those who belong to the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews but are liars instead. I will make them come and bow down at your feet, and, I, and they will know that I love you. So, again, right? Because a Jew is not one outwardly, but within, right? Because of the 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 work through the heart by the spirit 
the circumcision made out made without hands in Christ. So who call, was calling themselves Jews but were not? Interesting. Let no one deceive you in any way, for it it will not come until the rebellion occurs, meaning the end. The end will not come until the rebellion occurs, the falling away, and the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, is revealed. He will oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So he will seat himself in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Amazing. Amazing. And all that came to pass. So what are we being played? We're being played. We are being played. Not by God. By Satan. Being deceived. The nation's being deceived to take on roles that don't necessarily partake or that don't necessarily have place It truly is like role playing when in fact it has been finished. Christ Jesus revealed. In Christ Jesus is revealed the mystery. All knowledge and wisdom and understanding is in him. We are saved by faith, by grace, through his, the love of the Father. Believe on him, for the world around us is <clears throat> boasting in the life it has to offer you by accepting this, this knowledge over the knowledge of the truth. Having been buried with him in baptism, you were raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. Alive in Christ. Amen. Let us come away from worldly love, worldly promises of acceptance, worldly comforts of apparent place and position and worldly love that clearly by this guy's standards or by the guy interviewing standards is conditional. He's like, I would have never thought in a million years calling this person my friend. And now that she, you know, apparently abandoned that call, he's like, oh, yeah, hey, friend. Amazing. Why didn't he love her before? In the same way, we are t we are called right to show mercy, as the Father has shown mercy. We are to love the enemy and to forgive. Forgive. And bestow our trust, put our trust in him who has overcome death. O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. Yours, O Lord, in the kingdom is the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. Christ, making of twain one calling creation back to its onto himself
what we witness as a falling away now is 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 but a deception of the most cruel and abusive aspect of Satan towards men. When all along we have the saving word, the foundation, truth, salvation, where clearly all we have to do is come out from it. Just as this person showed, right? That Just as this person showed you that sh it is possible to come out of, a, of an apparent cult, why do people choose to remain part of the only cult that is, which is the prearrangement, right? The manipulation that you are prolonging the inevitable, which is accepting the Lord Christ Jesus? Or will you play the game as long as you can in convincing yourself that you can overcome the idiocy of it all, just like this person thought he could, but then realized that he hated it? So let us not have our hearts hardened, but let us come out from that idiocy, that redundant, manipulative aspect of a prearranged game, reality that we call the world, and come into the light of God, forsake the darkness, come unto life, which is the promise, the true promise of our Lord and Savior and the Father. Amen. Forever and ever.